a team of practitioners, we all have our own gift. Our next um, guest is Jimmy Yen. Jimmy is actually a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist. He is the CEO of Achieve Integrative Health Center in... Um, I just lost my space. He's the CEO of Acupuncture and Wealth Technologies training company that provides training services in acupuncture, Chinese medicine, nutrition, and business development. Um, his clients are located all over the world from Australia, Europe, England, to all over the United States. Jimmy serves as the medical advisory committee for the neuropathy alliance of texas at the only acupuncturist among three neurologists his specialization in neurology has patients flying in from california arizona alaska and the east coast to receive treatments at his clinic his clinic serves as a rotation clinic for physicians physician assistants and nurse practitioner students to observe the clinical results achieved with his proprietary acupuncture technique called QRA, which stands for Quick Relief Acupuncture, and FPD, which stands for Functional Pulse Diagnosis. And I just want to welcome Jimmy. He's going to talk to you about how to guarantee success in recalibrating your health. Like, what a great lead into this. So welcome, Jimmy. I'm so grateful to have you. Well, thank you for having me, Dr. Holly. Absolutely. Excited to be here. And uh, yeah, just to share, you know, along with alongside other practitioners and their specialties, how we can um, improve our health to, you know, for 2022, even though it's not, it's we're at the end, we're at the beginning of February, but still, you know, it's still the early of the year. So we can set our, you know, uh, goals and, you know, resolutions right now. Uh, no better time than now. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to just share a bit of what I do at, in my clinic um, and also along with my uh, coaching clients. And it's a simple technique um, that, that can set the foundation because it's about foundations. Like when you're building a house, you want to build a solid foundation because if you don't, everything you build above it is going to topple down. And so yeah. that's just so crucial. Did you want me to just go ahead and get started? Yeah, or? that's yeah. Go ahead and go. I'm okay. I'm smiling because I use the house foundation so often with my patients. Like, if you don't have a foundation like of nutrition and who you are, like, how can you put the walls up? Exactly. Yeah, it's just gonna. So fall. that's why I'm smiling because I'm like a lot of us like using like foundation. Like, you know, it's yeah. No, I would love for you to just get going and you know, and just talk and, you know, share and just, you know, give great insight to the high performers and leaders that are, are going to be listening and that are on the call. Okay, sweet. Yeah. And if you have any questions, you can always stop me, interrupt me, uh, just like a conversation. So, you know, yeah. you're probably going to hear a lot of analogies, a lot of healthcare practitioner, practitioners, we, we like to use similar analogies because, you know, the body's pretty simple. And so building a foundation. So one of the things is, you know, a lot of times when people are trying to change their health, you know, whether they've got, you know, the COVID or whether they got some type of chronic autoimmune condition, they were like, what do I do? What do I add? What do I take? You know, what, what, what foods do I eat? And those are all important. But what's even more important is what you do before you do all that. And so I like to use the analogy of a plant, right? So if you have a plant and you're, you got a flower in the, in, in the soil, you got this flower in, this, in, a pot, in, a, in, in, in a pot of soil, if someone came along and poured motor oil into the pot, it's gonna kill that flower, right? So then my question will be, how can you revive that flower? How can you get it to grow back again? Now, some people may just give up on the flower and just say, you can't, okay? <laughs> but you can't give up on your body because you only have one body, okay? So you gotta do something about it. You can't just give it, call it quits. You can't throw it in the towel. So what, you know, what do you do? You know, what does a flower need to grow? So when I ask this to my audience, when I'm in my patients, you know, they usually say, oh, the flower needs sunlight. Yeah, they're absolutely correct. It needs water, yes. It also needs nutrition, right? Nutrients in the soil for it to grow. And they are absolutely correct. But the, the, the problem is this, if you don't remove that motor oil, 
it doesn't matter how much sunlight that that little flower gets it ain't gonna grow it doesn't matter how much water you put in it it ain't gonna grow and so really the, the first step when you're trying to rebuild your health recalibrate your health I like to use the calibration because we're you know it's it's uh, just a new word I, I just like the way it sounds so recalibrate your health and so you have to first remove what's hindering you from healing in the first place or sometimes you can say what's caused the disease in the first place and so yeah. you have to remove that first before you can add all the good stuff adding all the good stuff whether it's diet supplements you know meditation exercise adding all the good stuff it might help a little but it won't help a lot if you don't remove the main thing that's hindering you from healing in the first place right so really the first step is to remove you know you have to remove in order to gain something and I like to say also you know it's just like I got a little ball here so let's say you want to travel this is the earth a little little earth ball right let's say we're here in the US and you want to travel to Africa right there right in order to go from the US to Africa guess what you got to give up something and what do you got to give up you got to give up being in the US because as long as you stay in the US there's no way you're gonna be able to get to Africa so in order my point is in order to get something new you always have to give up something first right yeah. and, and when I say that sometimes people are like oh I don't want to give up I don't want to give up uh, my donuts I don't want to give up you know uh, you know playing you know exercising you know five hours a day and, and it's what I like to what people to think about is not necessarily like give up stuff that you like to do right I mean the donuts yes you got to put those down okay <laughs> but it's not about giving up something you like to do it's about removing you from your current spot so that you can get to another spot and so removing the toxins that's in your body that's that's just infiltrating your intestines it's seeping out your intestines going into your bloodstream causing the autoimmune problem right so it's not just about putting good foods into your into your body you have to remove the toxins first and that's why a lot of nutritionists uh, naturopaths Chinese medicine practitioners acupuncturists we focus a lot on detox and so a lot of patients don't understand why you got to detox first this is the reason because the toxins that are accumulated in your body over the years right most of the time it's accumulated over the years it's not just overnight I mean there are things that are overnight like chemotherapy right but if there, if you have the accumulation of toxins over time you have to get rid of that first because it's polluting your intestines and your intestines is the area where you're absorbing nutrition so if you clog all those pores so to speak with toxins you're not your body that nutrition that you're drink that you're eating and the water that you're drinking it's just going straight through your body it's going one out it's going one in one end and out the other yeah. end right it, it, it ain't stopping and so that's important to unclog those pores those pores are where you absorb the nutrition right so that's super important in regards to the first step and I'm spending a lot of time on this because I really want to emphasize the first step is you have to give up something where you have to remove something in order to gain something that's not just in health but it's also in life right and I'll go through some examples when I talk about what are the things you need to start looking at removing right because we like to talk about the three stresses stress stress is a killer right but when we say stress most people think oh just the emotional stress oh it's my spouse if I could just if my spouse could just stop pissing me off I would be I would not have stress or if I didn't have to go to work I would not have stress right and so those are the things you know those are just part of it that's like the emotional stress but there's actually three types of stress physical chemical and emotional everybody just focuses on the emotional which is important I would say probably the most important but mm -hmm. you got the physical you got the chemical so physical chemical emotional physical uh, stress is not enough exercise like probably a lot of the world since the pandemic started we've been very inactive even though we have more we have more time to schedule exercise but we don't do it right versus when we were busier we were actually more diligent about it so 
not enough exercise, and then the opposite extreme, too much exercise. Working out five days, pumping weights uh, five hours a day ain't healthy for your body, okay? Those bodybuilders, they look healthy, but every bodybuilder I've treated in the fitness, you know, those people that compete in fitness, their insides are not healthy. They look healthy, but they're not healthy, right? So too much exercise, not enough exercise. That's physical stress. Chemical stress, anything you put in your mouth, anything you put on your body, it could be lotions, right? It could be some creams and anything you put in your mouth, literally foods, nutrient supplements, medications, all of that is a chemical stress in your body. So it's either building, so whatever you put in your mouth is doing one of two things. It's either building you or tearing you down, right? There's no in between. It's only doing one or the other. So that's a chemical stress. And then the third one is emotional stress. That's what everybody you know, relates uh, when, when I say stress. Now emotional stress, you know, it can be from family, it could be from work, it could be from politics, it could be from what you create in your own mind, right? This is why meditation or types versions of meditation or I would say self-reflection, you know, these things are super important because a lot of the times we allow or we create the stress, the emotional stress in our body. And what I mean by that, I forgot who said this, but um, someone said, I, it, was, it was a quote, no, it's like, no one can ever hurt you emotionally if you don't allow them to, mm -hmm. right? So, it's, so that's under our control. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was just so powerful. I forgot who said that. I just read so much, I forgot who said what. But, well, it, the other thing that I hear all the time is similar to that is if you don't have a button to push, nobody can push your button. Exactly, exactly. If you're not triggered emotionally, there's no trigger that's going to happen. So yeah. it's the same kind of messaging. Exactly. And, and if you have the button to push, if you don't give it to someone to push, <laughs> they can't push it. That's it's the right. same thing, right? <laughs> so right. yeah, yeah. So those are the three stresses, right? So then you got to... So, Going back to the analogy of the plant, you have to remove something in order to gain something, or you have to remove the toxins before you can actually put it in nutrition. Then the next thing that people ask me is, how do I decide what to remove first, right? And so this is, you know, majority of the time, I would say people, in, in, uh, the patients in our clinic, the easiest thing, I like to tell people to go for the low hanging fruits. What's the easiest thing to remove, right? And so I can tell you, emotional is the hardest thing to remove. So let's just save that for later, okay? That's the hardest thing to remove um, because that's the hardest thing to change up here. So what's next? Usually physical is easiest to change. The physical stress, right? So not enough exercise or too much exercise. So if you're not getting enough exercise, then you want to introduce some type of exercise. It can just be walking. When we say exercise, people think of, oh, I gotta go to CrossFit, I gotta go to Orange Theory, and I gotta you know, burn an hour, and no, 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 no. Exercise is, there's different types of exercise, right? You could just go walking, but just do it continuous for 30 minutes, and do it every day. Just doing that is exercise, right? You can use your own body weight, do some squats, jumping jacks, whatever. It doesn't have to be hitting a gym. And especially with COVID right now, you know, um, you know, I mean, I know the gyms are open, but you know, some people are st still scared of going into the gym. It's okay. You got something called the outdoors, right? You can go outside, it's free, and you can use those. And so that's if you don't have enough exercise. Now, if you have too much exercise, too much exercise generates a lot of inflammation. So you definitely need to reduce that inflammation by just reducing your exercise. You don't have to stop. Just reduce it, right? So that's the e that's usually the easiest thing for someone to reduce or change or remove, right? And then the next thing is chemical, and that's usually what people come to us for is the chemical part. The chemical part is what you put in your mouth, and so the first thing again, you have to remove the toxins that are in your body, not just in your intestines, because a lot of people when you start having you know, the toxins in your, in your gut, and it starts seeping out of your gut, which, you know, 
we now know is called leaky gut, and that goes into your bloodstream, and your bloodstream goes everywhere. So that means toxins can accumulate everywhere. But where they tend to accumulate is in your gut and also actually in your lower extremities, especially if you have a sedentary job. We see a lot of people who have something called pitted edema, which is basically just water is just staying, going down to your feet and it ain't coming back up, right? And you can push on your, on your shin and you'll leave a big thumbprint. That's a clear sign you don't have good circulation, right? And so we need to make sure we eliminate all of that toxins first before you start adding new stuff in, right? Now, you don't have to eliminate it 100%. You just have to eliminate at least 50% of it. Because just imagine if you have, if you're trying to, you have a cup of water. Let's say I have a cup, right? I have a cup of water. It's full. Now, I want to put new water in here. There's no way I can put new water if I don't first dump out some water in here, right? So that's the same with your with your legs, with your intestines, right? You don't your body has so much inflammation and it's got so much fluid retention. You can't put in more fluid if you don't get rid of the fluid first. And so we have to get rid of that. And what's the ways that we eliminate toxins? Three ways: bowels, urine, and sweat. Mm -hmm. So which one, you know, I, I'll, I'll ask our patients, which one would you like to use, okay? <laughs> most of most of patients prefer urination, right? Urination and maybe some, some bowel movements. Most people don't like the sweating idea, right? If they're, if they're, well, at, now they're at home, maybe they don't, they don't mind so much. But when they go to work, right, they don't want to be sweating through their, their, their shirt, right? So we try to help them eliminate it through bowels and urine, right? Although we do have an infrared sauna in our clinic, so that does help detox through the skin. But usually it's through bowels and urine. And that is the reason why when you go to your health practitioner, they give you some detox supplements um, and it makes you poop more, okay? That's the reason why. Because imagine, if you, if you are pooping a lot after that, those detox you know, supplements, guess what, all of those Basically, toxins were staying in your body and your body was absorbing it, right? And so it's important we need to clean that out and then we can put in the new nutrition so your intestines can absorb it and heal and then that's how you can start building a better foundation, right? And the last one I'll talk about is the emotional, the hardest one to, to remove, right? Because a lot of times it is external influences, external factors. And, you know, you don't just say, hey, I'm gonna, I want a divorce or, hey, to my kids, you, okay, you're on your own now. I don't care you're five years old, you're on your own, okay? <laughs> See ya, right? You can't do that, right? So the, the, the emotional one is harder to do. But it's actually, you know, what people don't realize is the, the way to fix it is us. We have the power to again like we were talking about if you don't allow if you don't have the buttons for someone to push no one can push your buttons right and so if you don't allow someone to stress you out they can't stress you out now that's easier said than done but if you don't practice it now you will always get stressed out by the same situations and you can say you can say maybe counseling uh, or you know that could help or sometimes just some personal development life coach right look for those to, to help, um, like I also coach other acupuncturists um, and, and business owners on how to build a business and a lot of times we focus on mindset training. And so maybe a business coach, if you, ha if you own a business, go to a business coach, right? But find someone to help guide you by asking you the right questions. I think that's the biggest thing is having someone ask you the right questions. No one can do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. And, but we can give you the guidance about where to go and have you think about it yourself. So a lot of it is about self-reflection. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things that, you know, where do you start? I would start with those three things and then start adding on, okay, do I need acupuncture, chiropractic? Do I need supplements? Do I need herbs? Do I need blah, 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 blah. Then determine that. First do the foundation, clear out, remove, and then find what you need later. 
I think that's the hardest part, though, too, Jimmy. Sometimes even as a leader and a high performer, the individuals listening, they're not sure. They know what they need in their business. They know they need to grow their finances. They know what their profit margins are, or they know they need to run that extra mile to do that huge athletic event. But sometimes, I, I don't know if you find this in your clinic, but it's like, who do I reach out to first that will help me? Because there's so many great practitioners out there. Yeah, that's a great question. So it, it, it depends on... I would say the experience of the practitioner, right? Mm -hmm. So my scope of practice is not counseling, so I do not do counseling. However, I will, I will coach my, my patients and also my clients on personal stuff that I've done. So right. I can help guide them through that. Um, mm -hmm. If that's not enough, like I said, maybe uh, look to, I, I love psychotherapy, right? Um, you know, I think they have a lot of tools that can mm -hmm. really help. So, I, but then it's, I gotta be careful about recommending psychotherapy because I'm not saying you're crazy, okay? Right. <laughs> That's that conversation yeah. you need to have. Maybe they need, to, they need to come up with a different name instead of psychotherapy yeah. because when people hear that, they're like, what are you trying to say, I'm crazy? <laughs> right. right, That's the label it's gotten. Yeah, but I, I would say I, I, I love to refer to psychotherapists uh, because they do have the training and the tools to guide someone. I will do my part just based on my personal experience, but if it gets to a point where what I'm sharing from my personal experience is not enough, definitely um, and I'm gonna refer them out to someone who can help in that process because if they don't change their mindset the way they think, and business owners, successful business owners know this, mindset yeah. is everything, right? The strategies, yeah. the tactics, yeah, they're, they're important, but nothing's more important than mindset. You don't have the right mindset, it doesn't matter what you do, right? right. So yeah. And it, I think like, the, guiding, the guiding patients through that mindset piece is, you know, that comes up with all of our speakers that have spoke. Um, you know, it all, it all starts with us and then Lauren who just spoke and it's advocating for your health. And I, I guess maybe you and I could say, if you're feeling like you don't know, um, do you need an acupuncturist? Do you need a functional medicine practitioner? Do you need a naturopath? Maybe at that point, kind of what Lauren said, maybe call and interview us and ask us questions and then we can guide you because I know for sure, and I don't know, we can ask Jimmy, but I know for sure that people can reach out to me and I'm happy to talk to them and make sure they're, I'm the right fit and I can help you support where you're hitting a wall. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yes, they can definitely reach out to me uh, or any of their, you know, acupuncturist or other practitioners. Um, you know, it, it is a journey, right? There, uh, unfortunately, like, I wish there was like the medical profession, they, they created the primary care, right? The primary care physician is supposed to be that person. But I'm not saying for, I'm not saying not to go, I'm not saying to go, okay? I'm not right. saying, I'm just saying that model, I wish yes. from the natural medicine uh, uh, perspective, we had like a center like that, like a primary care health advocate. A, a, you know, a primary health advocate that can help guide the people to the, the, to the right or at least seek in the right direction which practitioner they may need first, right? And so for acupuncturists, I can tell. I can tell you, you know, when's the time for acupuncture, the, the, we do two things, right? Number one, acupuncture basically moves your blood circulation. So if you need help, with circulatory problems, circulation issues. You need help in, you know, that exercise is not fixing because exercise moves the blood. Acupuncture can move the blood. We, depending on where we put the little pins, we can move the blood flow anywhere we want in the body. That's the first thing it does. And the second thing it does, and this is the beauty of acupuncture, it has the ability to retrain your brain to do that, to do that by itself, right? Now, what's the limitation of it? This is why I love chiropractic chiropractic does something that we can't do. If there is an impingement, a misalignment of a spine pushing on the nerve, it doesn't matter how much blood we move to that spine, it, we ain't gonna move it, right? Yeah. So we need chiropractic to help and step in. 
right? Now, if the acupuncturist is not versed in, let's say, blood labs, which we are in our clinic, so we do also functional medicine in our clinic, but let's say the acupuncturist does not, then that's when you need to go to a functional medicine practitioner, someone who's versed in looking at labs in a different way, not the allopathic way, but a different way, a more you know, holistic way. Like, how can we identify what's problems that are starting to occur before they actually become a problem, right? That's and so from, my, from our clinic, we know, we work, with, we work with a lot of practitioners because we know the limits of what we can do and when we need help. So we always, all of our patients never, are rarely just seeing us. They're always seeing at least three or four other practitioners because we know our limits. Right. And, you know, that comes back to the space and time that I'm really like, you know, my impact is to heal chronic disease. And I love what Jimmy's saying. And we have to hear this and hold on to it. Everybody that's listening is that we have limits too. But if we're a really good practitioner, and I know that we are, we're going to refer out, we're going to find the right practitioner that or we might need imaging or we might need blood work or you know whatever the needs are and you know do get your yearly or you know bi-yearly lab works done because that is what jimmy's talking about we just spoke about it earlier is if we know that a, a value in whatever system it's hard for me to go here because i'll go deep but in whatever system that value starts to rise that is now a watch and that is not necessarily treat hard but like be aware mm -hmm. whatever that number is and that's what that's what jimmy's saying i think from a functional medicine standpoint we're not looking at like blood glucose to be 300. once it starts to climb in the 98 99 100 101 oh there's more there's more glucose or sugar circulating around what do we do about that before yeah. now we start getting elevated hemoglobin a1c elevated insulin on and on which most people know the diabetes paradigm that's why i always use it like we know to work and that jimmy's saying with a functional medicine practitioner let's change your food let's look at your stress you know let's look at what you're doing for the foundation of who you are to get to where you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. You, you just have to, it's about a, you know, Chinese medicine, we, we, uh, we are taught and, and, and it's, it's been used for thousands, 3000 years is prevention, you know, and that's what it is. And functional medicine just uses today's technology for prevention. So, mm -hmm. so I always ask, so when I, when I'm describing labs to our patients, I always ask them, so, you know, do you want to wait till you have a problem to do something, do something about it? Or do you want to catch it and then make sure it never becomes a problem? And so what do you think people say? Of course they want to catch it before, you know, nobody wants to have to end up having surgery or, you know, some life-threatening problems. So if you can catch it early and using technology, that's, we love, we love technology, right? We use thermography in our, cl in our clinic. We, we, we uh, send out for labs and imaging. Use everything together. No medicine has every data. You need to get data points from every single type of medicine, every type of diagnostic tool, and then put it into a piece. And that will give you a clear picture about the patient's health, which will help everybody. Mm -hmm. And I love that analogy, and I'm going to go deeper with that. Do you want to end up in the hospital setting before it's taken care of? And here's where I go with patients, especially high performers. If you're going to pack on all that stress that you're doing and that stress on the body, and you're doing the best you can to exercise, like Jimmy said, maybe it's not the right exercise, or you're not circulating, so you're doing exercise, causing pain, there's emotion in there, on and on. And what I love about um, Chinese practitioners is like there's a blockage there's dis-ease so let's open up that so that that organ system can have the blood flow and the energy that it needs so it doesn't say disease but where I'm going with this is let's take care of it as sooner rather than later so that when you have made your created your vision created your goals now you're at your wealth whatever that vision is for you 
you're not hanging out in the doctor's offices like most of our care is now 70 80 even 55 65 years old with um, uh, heart attacks sorry go to my my medicine i was gonna say mis but heart attacks and you know um diabetes and metabolic disturbances that's why we're in the chronic disease problem that we're in like let's not wanna like hang out and lock up those waiting rooms for hours on end because we all know Again, I am not disrespecting. I love my medical practitioners, but I don't know about you, but I don't want to hang out for an hour and a half for a 15 minute appointment at a doctor's office. No. And then that's my retirement time yeah. where that's my time because I've done what God put me on this earth to do. Yeah. I don't think so. That doesn't resonate with me at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, no, same here. I, I completely, I completely understand and agree. Yeah. So it's, it's just, you know, it's just using, I mean, I work with a lot of physicians also. Uh, our, our specialty is, is mostly in neurology. So we work with all the neurologists in our city. And yeah, it's, it, it's uh, there's benefits. There's definite benefits. I love, like I said, I love their diagnostics. I love yeah. diagnostics. More information is always better. That's always tell the patients. Yeah. And then how we utilize that information. With a few minutes we have, I know there's, um, quite a few listeners that will hear this, but um, can you just briefly, I know this wasn't included in your talk, but I know you can as a professional, I think, how do you, as a neurologist and having that neurology focus yeah. in acupuncture and Chinese medicine, he's like, where is she going with this? Support, as long as the removed defending foods are things, around like migraines. Would you feel comfortable doing a small like... Like how do I, how do I... Uh treat a migraine patient uh, okay yeah so migraines what we found we treat a lot of migraines so majority of the cause is actually cervicogenic which basically means it's coming from the neck right mm -hmm. and so um, now there's many causes but the ones that we see most often is uh, caused by the neck so this inflammation in the neck so we're looking at so this is where we want imaging right we want to rule out any tumors anything compression bleeding you know assuming all of that is ruled out we want to see, okay, next, the neck. What's going on in the neck? A lot of times they have some structural issues in the neck, and which causes inflammation. That inflammation pinches on the nerve, which triggers, the nerves go over into your head, which of course will give you a migraine, right? And so we can reduce the inflammation off those specific nerves, and that's the first step. The second is finding out which organ was supposed to heal that in the first place, but didn't do its job. So then we have to move blood to that organ. And a lot of times, is this is not gonna be a surprise, it's your liver and gallbladder. Those two organs are in charge of healing. The, they have nerves that go all the way around your head. And that's usually where people feel the migraines. So when we decrease the inflammation off the nerves in the, in the spine and the neck and improve circulation to the liver and gallbladder, the migraine goes away. So that's a general, you know, that's what we typically see. Now we also see menstrual migraines. Uh, there's idiopathic where everything is normal. Uh, we also see allergies, you know, those can trigger migraines. Um, uh, food, obviously if you eliminate the food or if you help decrease the inflammation within the gut, right? Mm -hmm. We don't see too many of those. We mostly, we mostly see in regards to migraines, neck cervicogenic, which is neck caused or uh, hormone caused. Those are the two yeah. biggest ones that we see. Yeah, thank you for doing that because I know there's a lot of individuals that are on this call that um, do suffer from migraines that mm. I do refer out to if I've done all the work and I and I um, I, I do chiropractic with mm -hmm. them to the chiropractor and acupuncturists and Chinese medicine because you guys are so great at opening up the gallbladder and liver and just getting that blockage out and yep. so that's why i was like oh i'll have jimmy talk about that because i know it will hit so many but i just want to um i just i don't know if anybody has any questions at all i just um or anything that you want to add and um speak about and if anybody has questions jump it in the chat or or um take yourself off mute and feel free to jump in I'm gonna just drop a link in for the calendar and why I'm, um, this is for the summit. 
so that you can connect to Jimmy here and then all my information about all of our speakers are on, on the site for them. And then if Jimmy would be so lovingly, um, we'll talk about, we each um, asked each speaker to give away a freebie. If you could talk about how, what that is, what that's about. And at the end of that, let them all know how to get in touch with you. And as you do that, I'll type it in the um, chat for you. Yeah, so the uh, free training that I'm offering is 30 ways in 30 days. So it's 30, it's basically a daily training of what you can do every single day. Just one thing, you just gotta change one thing, do one thing new um, every day. And in 30 days, you're gonna see your health drastically improve, right? So just 30 ways and they're simple stuff, okay? It is not, it is not like, oh, you gotta run a marathon or something like that. I'll give you an example. One of them is one thing, all of, a lot of all of the things I, uh, that we post on there is what I do. One of my favorites is nap time, okay? So, you know, uh, not to go too long, but when we were a kid, when I was a kid, we would have, you know, nap time at elementary school, and they don't have that anymore. I'm like, why do they take it away, right? My parents grew up like that. They raised me to grow up. You know, after lunch, we would always take a 30-minute nap, right, to recharge. I still do that today. I treat three hours in the morning, and then I take a nap. I have a two hour, I have a two hour break, which I take a 30 minute nap. I eat, de-stress, 30 minute nap, I'm recharged, and I have an afternoon shift, and I'm ready to go. So it's just simple okay. things like that, okay? 30 ways in 30 days. Uh, Dr. Holly can send you the link on how to get, in, get uh, enroll in that. You can reach out to me if you have any questions, right? Any questions, you can reach out to me at info at achieveih.com so info at achieveih.com reach out to me any questions um, I'm huge on social media so if you want to reach out DM me there you can DM me there also I if you have a question I will give you an answer I answer all questions is your um, social media Instagram do you, is that achieve, achieve, IH achieve well? integrative health at achieve okay. integrative health yeah Oh, uh, uh, I believe. <laughs> I don't. Let me check. I know. I don't look at my much either. I don't look at what I... my handle is. <laughs> it is Achieve Integrative Health. I just heard Okay. <laughs> They'll find you. They'll find you. So I just want to say I'm just so grateful for you, Jimmy, and just showing up and you know, all of us on this summit, I know just love really hard, want people to have the absolute best healing life that we can have and just really go about as leaders, like our vision and our goals and, and just feeling our best. And all of us are showing up for that. And I just wanna really like take a minute and just thank you for your, your service, your efforts, your kindness, and just to show up and get your voice out there because so many of us are here and wanna be heard and we're just not sure like, who do we reach out to as a practitioner? Yeah. Who do we reach out to as a coach? Like, what does that look like? What is our story? And how can we have accountability and help around that? So I'm just so grateful for you and thank you for showing up and please keep in touch. Definitely. Well, thank you, Dr. Holly. I'm honored yeah. to, to be a part of this, uh, the, the summit and uh, thank you for doing this and bringing so many different practitioners and with different skill sets to help because there's so much information. So I applaud you for getting us, wrangling us like cats to get together, <laughs> to share this, to share a message of healing. We have one message, it's to heal. And the, uh, regardless right. of what we do, it's we are in charge of our health. We can heal ourselves. We just need the right information. And that's what Dr. Holly has brought all of us to share the right information. So I appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much, my dear. And you enjoy the rest of your day. And you, you stay too. well over there. I will. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Be well.